It's Sushi Saturday! I first learned to make sushi a couple of years ago when I took some lessons and I make it home quite a lot because when you make your own it's so much better, it's so much fresher than sushi you get in the shops, it's really good and it's a nice way to spend the evening, especially when you have some friends around, it's just a good thing to do together. So if you want to try making your own sushi at home, I wrote a comic book about how to make it. Here it is. Um, it has everything you need in there, all the amounts, all the timings, and the whole thing is a comic book, so it's really cute. It comes with a Yutaka sushi rolling mat and two pairs of chopsticks. I don't know if you can see, but at the moment they're cat chopsticks, really cute. And you can get that from my website, cakeswithfaces.co.uk, or my Etsy shop, cakes... <laughs> etsy.com slash shop slash cakeswithfaces. Here's all the things you need. First, the rice. Make sure you get sushi rice. The nori, that's seaweed sheets. A really sharp knife. It needs to be a non-serrated knife and as sharp as possible. A sushi rolling mat. If you get my comic book, it comes with one of them. Some vegetables for the fillings. We've also got some fish that's in the fridge at the moment. I'll show you it later. Some wasabi. You can get it in a tube or I've got this powdered wasabi from the wasabi company. Soy sauce for serving the sushi with, a thick bottomed saucepan. And if you want, you can also have some gyoza and some edamame to go with the sushi. The first time you make sushi at home, it might seem like you need a lot of things, but a lot of the ingredients last for more than one time. So the next time you make sushi, you won't need to buy quite as many things. And all in all, it's a lot less expensive than going out for sushi. One of the things I hate about when I go to a sushi restaurant is I feel like I have to hold back because I know it's so expensive. But when you make your own at home, you can have as much as you want. We're making sushi for two people. Um, we're gonna make quite a lot because we eat probably more than you should do. <laughs> um, but it is a really good thing to do with your friends as well. You can all make sushi together but make sure you practice for the first time so then you can impress all your friends with how brilliant you are at making rolls. <laughs> you want 310 grams of rice. Next, you have to wash the rice to get rid of all the dust and whatever's on it. It's important to wash the rice more times than you think you need to. You're supposed to wash it till the water comes out clear. It never really does, but just wash it a lot of times. Just swirl it around and wash it with your hands. And look at all of that coming off. Here we are, good enough. Don't fall out. <laughs> Drain off as much water as possible. And 360ml of water. It's important to measure the rice and the amount of water exactly and follow the timings to the minute. <laughs> Sometimes when you're cooking you can say I'll add a dash of that and I'll cook it for a bit till it looks like it's done. And sushi is not one of those sorts of foods. You have to follow the instructions exactly. The rice is the most important part and if it's not cooked properly your rolls will fall apart and it just won't go right. You need to use a thick bottom saucepan. Somebody messaged me and said they were using my comic and they ruined their saucepan. That's why you need one with a thick bottom, um, like to spread the heat out. And we're gonna cook the rice without stirring it. It's gonna absorb all the water. So it's really important. And while it's cooking, you have to not lift the lid. Like in this one, you can see what's going on inside, but just resist the temptation to lift the lid up and see what's going on. Because if you open it up, the steam will come out and you'll lose water. And we've measured exactly the exact exact amount of water we need. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we're going to bring that to the boil. You'll also need seasoning for the rice. It has to be sushi seasoning, not mirin, that's a different thing, and not just vinegar. Sushi seasoning. There's different brands, so if there's one you don't like, just try a different one. This is the one I had before. I'm using the bottle for vinegar at the moment, but you can kind of see it. If you can't find sushi seasoning in the shops, you can make your own. It's really easy and the recipe is in the inside cover of my comic book. There. <laughs> you just need uh, rice wine vinegar, sugar and salt. And the rice is boiling. Ah. Look. So what do we have to do now? Bill's always in charge of the rice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you need to turn the heat right down. I'm just going to take it off and put it on a smaller burner that's been 
pretty much on its lowest setting and leave it there for 10 minutes. While the rice is cooking, I'm going to prepare the vegetables. We're making half vegetarian sushi and half fish sushi because I don't eat fish and Phil loves fish. He would never be vegetarian. <laughs> First, I'm going to do the cucumber. It needs to be the width of the nori. Okay. <laughs> so I'll cut it in half first. And then cut it in half again. Slice out all the seeds from the middle because they're watery and they'll make the roll fall apart. And you can eat them. Cut the cucumber into strips. We want it to be a square on the end, so when we cut up the sushi rolls, it looks all nice and pretty. <laughs> because sushi is partly about how it looks as well as how it tastes. So cut it flat along the top, and then slice the sides straight. How's that look? That is pretty square and you want it straight along the top as well. Obviously, you can't get a perfect square. It's a cucumber. It matters. <laughs> <laughs> it must be perfect. Oh, well, that one's good already. We're about five minutes into the boiling of the rice and you see through the top, it looks like that. So there's a little bit of water at the bottom. Ding, ding. Nine minutes past eight. Ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> so Alarm. now it's time to take the rice off the heat. I just move it over there and turn the heat off. Again, don't lift the lid. That's what you have to do? Yeah, you leave it for some minutes. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. <laughs> What's the next vegetable, Amy? Pepper. <laughs> First, I cut it into strips. You can use anything, right? It doesn't have to be cucumbers and peppers. You can. Um, sushi just um, means the style of cooking with the rice and making rolls and things. It doesn't even mean fish, so you can put anything in a sushi roll. Once I made one with beetroot in, just beetroot out of a jar, and it was actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> so Did it make everything that. quite It was purple. a bit purple. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. I think I've seen them in like Sainsbury's or Tesco's, they have beetroot ones, uh, maybe. Yeah, I try not to have sushi from Sainsbury's or from the shops, because it's really horrible. <laughs> do, do you know why it's horrible? Because it's dried out, it's made probably three days before you eat it. <laughs> no, it's because, um, like when you make sushi at home, you can put it in the fridge, uh, not the fish, I wouldn't do that, but any of the other ones you can put in the fridge. But when you do, it cools down and all the salt crystallizes. And when the salt crystallizes, it does dry out and that's why it tastes a little bit different and just not mm. as fresh. Well, some people tell me they don't like sushi when they've only had lunchbox sushi from Boots or Tesco or somewhere. And I can see why, because it's really dry and horrible. Yeah, I don't want to be a, <laughs> too pretentious about it, but uh, sushi from restaurants like Yo Sushi or, or um, other Japanese restaurants is really good. I just cut that up and didn't talk about it at all. So <laughs> it's, it's the pepper. Um, what we're aiming for is strips of pepper, um, just straight strips. Um, so cut it straight and then chop off the curly bits at the ends. So you've got sticks to go in the middle of your rolls. And it might seem quite wasteful, but you can eat the trimmings. You can give them all to your hamster. Yeah, I don't think she can eat that much, that's like the size of her whole stomach. <laughs> I'll help her out, I'll make sure it's good quality. <laughs> Next is the avocado, first cut it in half. We're also aiming to get straight strips to go in the rolls, which is a bit more challenging with an avocado. <laughs> it's not really the right shape, so I'm just going to cut these bits off and eat them. Oops, there we are. So it's not all going in a roll, is it? Or not just one roll at least. <laughs> it's all going to be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> but um, some of it will be in a nigiri, right? Yeah, on, on a nigiri. On a nigiri, not on a nigiri. <laughs> Although you could put it in on a nigiri quite easily. Yeah, that would be nice. Just chop it up smaller. Did you know avocado isn't a traditional sushi ingredient? When you go to Japan, you don't really see it around that much and it's because it was introduced in America when sushi went over there because people didn't want to eat raw fish there. They thought that avocado has a similar texture to fatty fish, so they used that instead. It's one of my favorites, so I think it's delicious. Is avocado your favorite? Uh, probably the ones I make at home. What about when you go yeah. out? 
Um, I like, when I go out, I like having the ones that I can't make at home or don't. I probably could. <laughs> <laughs> like the um, the Inari pockets, the Tofu pockets, or the um, Tamago. You have made them before, right? No, I think oh, I you, you have, had. but I just never have. Okay. So that'd be a good one to try one day. So for two hungry people, how many vegetables have you cut up? Half a cucumber. We definitely won't use all of that though. Um, half a pepper and a whole avocado <laughs> because I'll really eat all the all of it we don't use. You probably don't really need that much. <laughs> you probably should have started earlier. Yeah. This isn't like a quick meal to make. That's why we um, make, tend to make sushi at the weekends. We have sushi Saturday. <laughs> it's not like weeknight 20 minute meals or anything, but it's a nice way to spend your time having a sushi roll competition. Yeah. <laughs> sushi Saturday is just a nice way for us to spend time together. And the rice is done. Here it is. All the water's gone. Lifted it off for the first time. Ta -da! It's not supposed to have any water left in it. I'm using a glass uh, dish for the rice. It's important not to use anything metal with the rice because that can ruin the flavour. You're supposed to use a wooden bowl though, right? But yeah, we... that's like the ideal, but I don't have one. So I guess you use this wooden paddle instead of a normal spoon. Yeah, this is a rice paddle. Yeah. But a wooden spoon would be fine, right? Yeah. Any old wooden spoon. And next we're going to put the seasoning on. Sprinkle the seasoning on. And how much do you put on? You don't want it swimming in seasoning, um, but you want all the rice grains to be just coated so you can see them sort of glistening. Yeah, it's really to taste because uh, I think we like it quite strong. Other people might not. So uh, taste it and then add more as you need to. Once we got a sushi seasoning that we didn't like, uh, the different brands do taste a bit different. So if you get one you don't like, just try a different sort. I got this from a stall at the market that has um, oriental foods. Um, you can also get it in the um, Asian food shop. And actually big supermarkets have sushi ingredients now. So uh, that's worth a look if you don't have a local shop that has that sort of thing. It's good. It's all your strength. Squeeze. <sighs> We need to cover the rice with a damp tea towel. That's to stop it drying out because it takes a while to make all the rolls and we don't want the rice getting too dry. Here's my rolling mat. I'm just covering it in cling film so it doesn't get ricey. <laughs> um, That's just to make it easier to clean, right? Yeah. Where can you get these from? With my sushi comic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so. <laughs> If you want extra ones, like if you're making sushi with your friends, sometimes it's good to have a couple of rolling mats so you can all make rolls at once. And you can get them from Asian food shops and online as well. Next, Jill's going to cut with the fish. We've got salmon and tuna. Um, I got the fish this morning from the fishmongers at the market. It's really important you don't get your fish from a supermarket. It has to be safe for sushi and not all fish is. They freeze it at a much lower temperature which kills off all the bacteria and means it's safe to eat raw. So always check that before you buy your fish. And you also need to eat it on the same day you buy it um, because it, it won't be safe otherwise. <laughs> um, I, I usually keep it in the fridge on some ice to keep it at a slightly lower temperature. Here it is. Halfway through cutting the salmon, uh, we forgot to hit record the first part. So, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's a little bit cut up. Get your salmon like this, and this is half cut up. And you can see I've already made some slices of nigiri. And the idea is you want to cut up your salmon. So for nigiri, you want sort of sheets of it. And this is quite wide. Quite often you'll have it thinner and maybe a bit longer. And the idea with nigiri is to drape it over a ball of rice. Like a little fish tablecloth. Yep. <laughs> and if you want to make it into a roll, or I'm going to have just some in a, a rice bowl, then you want just these smaller sections like that. So I usually use the offcuts. And to cut them, you take your knife, which is, this is a special sushi knife, but it doesn't have to be, as long as it's a sharp, non-serrated knife. And you want to just sort of slice across the top of the fillet. So just take it there and just slice across like that. That wasn't a particularly good example. Uh, so that's not very well shaped, but you get the idea. And then you repeat. So I go from there and take it all the way across. You can tell if the sushi is bad by how it cuts. If it's really tough and you're struggling to cut it and it's a sharp knife, then it might be bad. So 
what I normally do if I've got any suspicions, and I, I normally do this when I'm giving it to friends just to be sure. So I'll cut a little bit off and I'll just taste it. Mm. This is good. So this tastes really fresh. If it's not fresh, sometimes it tastes a little bit smoky and, and you can just tell if it's bad, it doesn't taste good. If you're feeling really brave, once you're done at the end, you can use the skin to make a salmon skin roll. That sounds horrible. It's nicer than you think. <laughs> I don't normally make it because it's quite a lot of effort on top of everything else. And we also have a lot of food, so I don't really need to make any more. <laughs> I've now cut up a good number of pieces that are good for nigiri and I'll choose my favourite six normally. <laughs> the top six. The top six. <laughs> top I, six I, I audition each and every one of them <laughs> and see how it goes. And the rest I'll cut up and I'll just put in a bowl and I'll use it with rice or I'll make a, um, a maki out of it later. Today is a special treat because I've also got tuna. And I don't always get that because it is more expensive than the salmon and they don't always have it. And if they do, it's not always good for sushi. So I'm no expert, but with the tuna, a nice dark deep red is what you're aiming for. That does look really dark. Yeah. So if you see it in the shop and it's quite a, a light palish colour, normally I won't even bother asking. It's probably not good. If you want to make nigiri, you just sort of slice the top off it. And if you want to make it into a rice bowl or a maki, which is what I'm going to do, just cut it up into slices or chunks. I love tuna. It's so good. <laughs> the taste of fresh tuna is so different to canned tuna. It looks completely different mm. as well. So I do like tuna in all its forms, but fresh uncooked tuna is just incredible. Next, I'm going to make the rolls. I'm going to start with a kapamaki, a cucumber roll. If it's your very first roll, I think that's a good easy one to start with. First, take a sheet of nori, and for the single filling rolls, the monomaki or hosomaki, you need just half a sheet. Before you start, get a bowl of water because that stops the rice sticking to your hands. It's important to keep the nori dry and to keep the rice wet. <laughs> <laughs> One side of the nori is shiny. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. And that's the non-shiny side. That's the shiny side. So you want the smooth shiny side down because that's going to be the outside of the roll. And make sure this is dry. Yes, or the nori sticks to it and it all goes wrong. So I'm going to wet my hands. You're supposed to clap <laughs> to get the water off. <laughs> and then grab a little bit of rice and keep the rice covered up. And you want to spread the rice out on the nori. It's supposed to be a couple of grains thick and as flat as possible on the top. Uh, the reason for that is so you don't get air gaps which make your roll fall apart. So arrange the rice carefully and we're going to cover not the whole sheet of nori, but all of it, uh, the bottom two thirds, the two thirds nearest you and just leave the strip along the top blank. And you wet your hands each time? Yeah, every time yeah. or you get covered in rice. But <laughs> you not... probably will anyway. <laughs> and you do need to be quite precise again. Shall we go into fast forward? <laughs> <laughs> So the edges are as neat as possible. It's like a slab with straight edges and a couple of grains thick. If you make it too thick, your roll will probably fall apart. Well, if you make an inside out roll, you cover the whole thing, then you turn it over and you, it really seems like the rice is gonna fall off, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's gonna be a kakamaki. So take a strip of cucumber and put it nearer to yourself. Not in the middle, just not quite on the edge, but leave a little gap. Press it down so it stays in place. Now, if you're using wasabi from a tube, this is the point where you spread the wasabi on top. I'm gonna to use the powdered wasabi, and the flavor on that one only lasts for about 15 minutes, so I'm gonna put it on when we eat the rolls. How much wasabi? Loads. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to have wasabi if you don't want it. No, don't put a lot on, because uh, normally if you can see a clump of wasabi on the top, it's too much. Oh yeah. <laughs> right, now we're ready to roll. <laughs> put your fingers on the filling and put your thumbs underneath the rolling mat. Push it up, you can roll it quite tightly and take it over like that. Tuck it in and then roll it over and give it a roll to make it a nice round shape. Don't press down too hard though. You've got to no. push down a little bit. You can be quite firm with it, but don't squash the roll. And how is it? 
Oh, it's okay. It's a bit baggy, actually. That didn't come out the best. Ooh. The next one will come out perfectly, I'm sure. <laughs> and your first roll is guaranteed to fall apart, so don't worry, you'll get the knack of it, and it should taste good anyway. And if it is falling apart, what can you do? You can use a grain of rice to glue it together if you need to, um, or you can um, squish the rolls into little teardrop shapes <laughs> and pretend they were meant to be like that all along. I think you can also just run water along the edge as well, like put your finger in, in the water. You can, that would be like, like glue. Yeah, let's just stick it together. First we're going to cut it in half. Before you cut the roll, uh, wet the knife because the rice will stick to it otherwise. And with this it's really important to use a sharp knife that isn't serrated because it will just tear up the nori. Put the rolling mat over. We don't want to squash the roll so I'm pressing down to the, the chopping board not towards the sushi roll so the, the roll's held in place. And you want to cut with the knife at 45 degrees with short cuts and don't press down with the knife because that'll squash the roll, just let it work its way through. And there we are, it's almost in the middle. And then put the two rolls together and you want to get all the pieces the same height so it looks nice. How many are we making? How many pieces? It's about six or eight. It's six or eight usually, yeah. Yep. There we are. There's my little kapamakis. Are they going to come out the same size? Let's see. Ah, oh, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Enough for one more piece there. So you're cutting off the end bits now. Yeah, I mean, if you cut it up perfectly equally, you can. You don't have to cut off the end bits to put the end bits down, but we can have them as tasters. Do you just put them on a plate or are you going to put them in the bento box? Put them in the bento box. I've got these other fancy plates. You can get things like that at Hyper mm. Japan from uh, Doki Japanese Tableware. Have some really nice things. Oh, I got these. They're at MCM as well. I think quite a few of the Comic Cons and stuff. They are actually. Yeah. What's up next? Next is going to be a pepper roll or avocado. Mmm. Uh, go with the pepper. The single filling rolls, the monomaki. I think they're called monomaki. <laughs> It, it's, it's a good name. I don't know if it's true. But... <laughs> Mono feels like it means one for single filling. They're mean. definitely called hosomaki, like a hose, because they're thin, I guess. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely right. Okay. Well, I know it's called hosomaki, but is it because they're like a hose? I uh, Probably not. No. <laughs> I don't think hose is a Japanese word. But Mono, I assume Mono is because Monokuma from Danganronpa. Oh, yeah. But he's two colours. But black and white, monochrome. that's like mono is, yeah. Monochrome. How important is it when you're making sushi to wear your sushi necklace? Very important. And remember, whenever you're doing this, always keep your rice covered. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise it will dry out. It takes quite a while to do this, right? And if you're making this for friends uh, before they come around, so you're making it in advance, do it as close as possible because it really does dry out. It's more fun to make it all together. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's definitely more fun to make it with friends all together. The pepper is a little bit more tricky than the cucumber. <laughs> so how's it going to go? Dun, dun, dun. What do you think it's going to be? Ooh. Oh, looks good. Yeah. yeah, there we are. I've also got this, which is a heart-shaped sushi roll mold. Can you see that? So you can make heart-shaped rolls. You put the nori in, then put some rice in, then the filling, and a bit more rice, fold the nori over, and press it shut, and you get a heart-shaped roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an onigiri mold. I got this uh, off the internet. <laughs> I think they have them at the Japan Center and places like that as well where you can get um, Japanese cooking stuff and you can make your own little onigiri. You fill it up with rice, put your filling in, put in a bit more rice and then press it down. It's really easy. Next I'm going to make the giant roll or futomaki as it's properly called. <laughs> That's a bigger sushi roll that has four or several different ingredients. I'm going to use four in the middle. And for this one, we want a whole sheet of nori, again, shiny side down. And sometimes, for whatever reason, the single filling rolls go wrong or fall apart, or sometimes they're a bit baggy like that one earlier. But I found 
The giant roll never goes wrong. It always goes right. <laughs> You're making some big promises here, Amy. <laughs> yes, it's foolproof, guaranteed. <laughs> but these are really good as well because they're really filling when yeah, you have them. Are. So a couple of slices of that, it's quite a lot. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to fill up the whole sheet apart from about an inch along the top. So about the same as the other ones, I yeah, guess. Yeah, just in exactly the same way, just bigger. I'm going to use four fillings in the middle. The cucumber, some avocado, then some more avocado, and some pepper. All the avocado. <laughs> if you arrange these really neatly, when you cut it up, you get like a diamond shape. <laughs> mm. I always think it's like a checkerboard. Yes, the checkerboard. <laughs> if, you, if you use different coloured peppers, it can be quite nice. Yeah, you could do that. These are a bit tricky. So I guess wasabi you'd put on here as well if you wanted to. Yep, you would. And I'll try and keep all these in place while I roll it up. Same technique. Yep. Ooh. Do so you roll the top over? Yeah, roll it oh. tightly. You think there it's we worked? are. Oh wow. See? Never goes wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I like to think about just getting one of these, picking it up and eating it. They do that, yeah. don't they? There's a Japanese festival. Really? Yeah, where they have a big fat roll like that and you have to eat it facing a certain direction and you're not allowed to talk until you've eaten the whole thing. Can we go? <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. That is probably quite a lot of food, but <laughs> I like the idea of walking down the street, holding one of these, just munching away. <laughs> With this one, because it's a giant roll, I'm just going to cut slices from one side to the other. There we are. It'd look nicer with a more colourful pepper, actually. Yeah, it? if you had um, some red pepper in there, yeah, it'd look better. Be good. Phil's going to make the nigiri. I am rubbish at nigiri, so he's going to make them. First thing, you need to wet your whole hand. Make sure your palm is wet as well. And then you grab a handful of rice. Well, not quite a handful. You grab some rice, sort of, like that amount. And then you just sort of squeeze it together. And actually, that's loads of rice. So then I just knock some off. And I give it another squeeze. And just sort of keep rolling it together. Knocking a bit off if it feels a bit big. And then... Another squeeze, keep rolling. And you don't want to squeeze too tight, but you want to form it into, well, kind of like a, a sausage, really, or a sort of dish, <laughs> dish shaped ball. And just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. And you end up with something like that. What you can do is you can put a little dent in the bottom to make it all professional and whatnot, but I'm not very good at that. So you get your rice, you then take your topping. So I'm going to use this nice piece of salmon, and you put that on your fingers. And if you want to put wasabi on, then you can put wasabi just on the inside there, but we will do that later. And then all you need to do is sort of close your hands together and you put on there. And there you go, that is a nigiri. This is how I like to make them. Proper chefs like to make it so the fish is longer and it sort of drapes over the top like that. They have it like a little tablecloth sometimes, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna make an avocado nigiri, just like before. Make the rice in exactly the same way. And again, you put wasabi on if that's really what you wanted, but we'll do that later. And you just put it, oops, <laughs> you try and put it on the top. Now it's not that easy with things like avocado. You sometimes have to put a little bit of pressure on there. And what you can do, if you're feeling fancy, is cut up a little strip of nigiri and you can wrap that all the way around and that just sort of helps to keep it on top. Next, I'm gonna do the edamame. They're in the pan and they just need boiling for a couple of minutes. While the edamame are boiling, I'm going to use the same pan and steam the gyoza on top. This is the way of cooking the gyoza that's in my comic book and more recently I've discovered a new way of cooking them. <laughs> in this way we're going to steam them and then fry them, but you can also fry them and then steam them. <laughs> If you're doing it the other way, you can cook them from frozen, put them in the frying pan, fry them until they're a little bit browned on the bottom. Then you throw on some water, cover it with some tin foil and steam them until they're cooked through. 
smells good. You only need to cook the edamame for a few minutes, about four minutes. If you overcook them, they go all soft and horrible. <laughs> the best way to tell if they're done is just to try one and you want to catch them before they start popping open. So I'll just give them a rinse in cold water to cool them down. Yay. I'm going to shake some salt on. This is sea salt. You can use normal salt as well. <laughs> Too many. You didn't see that. <laughs> there we are. Lovely. That was a bit much actually. Yum yum. <laughs> <laughs> they were actually really cooked. Look at that. We just switched cameras. Um, back to my normal camera, if you can tell. I got a G7X, which everybody on YouTube has. All my um, Japan videos were filmed on the big camera, which is a Canon 70D. Um, I think most people don't take a big camera around for vlogs, but um, it was really good quality and it actually worked really well. It did take a bit of a beating. <laughs> These look really good. I've run out of spaces. <laughs> and I think that is everything. Yeah. So we've got a nigiri here. We've got some cucumber and pepper rolls, some kapamaki and whatever pepper roll is. I don't know. I don't think it's got a name. Okay. And then we've got the futamaki here. We've also got these rice bowls, or the proper name is... Uh, chirashi sushi, kind of. There's some salmon and tuna in the bottom of that one. And the sprinkles on the top is this thing that I found in the Asian supermarket, which is really nice. It's called Gohan ni Mazete, um, which means mix in with the rice. Um, and it's got sesame seeds, daikon leaves, red perilla, whatever that is, um, seaweed and Japanese plum. And it's kind of got the salty Japanese plum flavor. It's really good. You're supposed to use it to make onigiri. <laughs> Look at these little guys. <laughs> um, but it's really good on top of the rice as well. And over here, we've got our edamame too. Now, instead of wasabi paste in a tube, which is what I used to use, now I like to use this wasabi powder, uh, which is from the wasabi company, uh, which actually contains some real wasabi, which most wasabi in a tube doesn't. And it's just got a much more fragrant flavor. It's uh, not quite as strong as wasabi in a tube, but it's got a more interesting flavor. It's a much fresher flavour. It's a lot closer to real wasabi. Yeah. But without the, the price and the hassle of actually getting fresh wasabi. I made a video about real wasabi ages ago. It probably looks really old, but it's on my channel somewhere. And with this, you add a little bit of water. And the reason I'm doing this last is because uh, the flavour develops over the first couple of minutes and then it starts to go away after about 15 minutes. So it's best to do it just before you eat. That's not true of the, of, well, it's not true of all of them, actually. I think no. it, the more wasabi in it, I think the more true that is. So mm. tube and stuff, you can use that whenever it's fine. Yeah. And a shot glass is perfect for mixing this up in. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit of water. So when it's ready, it's a paste and I can start to smell that now. It smells a bit sort of horseradishy in a way. That's quite a lot actually. <laughs> we like lots of wasabi. And now we feast. Yeah, <laughs> finally. This has actually taken us a lot longer because we've been filming. Usually we can make all the sushi in about an hour. Um, but your first time you make it, it'll probably take a lot longer because you don't know what you're doing and you're checking the instructions and it takes ages. But we've got it down to an hour, it's pretty good. some wasabi and a kapamaki. It tastes so much fresher. You can taste all the seasoning on the rice, the crispy cucumber, and this wasabi is really good. It's got like a fragrant flavor. Really good. We're gonna eat all this now. So remember, if you wanna have a go at making sushi at home yourself, all the instructions are in my comic book, How to Make Sushi, and you can get this from cakeswithfaces.co.uk 
or cakes with faces on Etsy. Um, and it makes a really good present as well. You can teach your friends to make sushi so they make sushi for you. <laughs> Everyone wins. So I'll be back soon with some more videos about Japan. So I'll see you soon. Bye bye.